So I just finished making myself a cup of tea and I used a new product I've been testing from Fire Maple. It's a portable table, if you will, and it comes with the unusual name of Dandelion Buddy. If you're interested in hearing my thoughts on it, keep watching. Before we begin, I just want to thank Fire Maple for sending out the Dandelion Buddy so that I could share it with you. So what I'll do is I'll just take it apart, put it back in its package so I can show you how not only it packs away and how it is assembled. I'll give you a few specifications for it and I'll show you how I've been using it. All right, let's get started. All right, so here is the Fire Maple Dandelion Buddy put away in its stuff sack. And it's a nice stuff sack. You know, it's Kadura like material. It's bound around the outside with a ribbon. It does have Velcro closure at the top, the inside of a kind of a rubberized coating. So I think it's probably durable and up to the task of keeping this all in one place. And well, I don't know how environmentally it could be damaged anyway. And so the table. And then there's a little zippered pouch inside that holds the legs in segments. So let me just bring those out and I'll give you the demonstration on how it goes together. Toss the bag aside. So you get four legs or four leg sections, if you will, and they're each six and a half inches in length. And you can use anything from one to all four of them, depending on how high you want it off the ground or maybe how far you have to push it into the ground. So assembly is very easy. They are threaded. One of the things I noticed about using this right away is that they're tightly threaded. I've had other things that were segmented and uh, had to be tightened up. And when you did and you put them all together, it rattled, not with this. This seems to have been a better design. I'll give you, like I said, I'll give you the specs and the materials and everything in a moment on it. All right, so it's all tightened together. Now, this is, has one more threaded section on the top, and that's going to thread on to the table itself. So that's where the, the nut and the thread is there. Uh, I guess there's a couple of ways of doing it. I thought when I got out here, the ground is usually very rocky that I was going to have to hammer this into the ground. If you do, I would recommend maybe putting a piece of wood over the top before you start hammering. Cause as soon as I started using my uh, mallet that I use for batoning knives through with, I was, I was starting to plug it up with a little bit of uh, duff in there. So just a, you know, a word of caution there, a word of experience, if you will. But then I found when I went to push it into the ground, the ground here was plenty soft and plenty deep. So that was kind of nice. So I did it this way. I just pushed it into the ground and don't, don't get me wrong. I am going to back up and show you this in a minute. Actually, why don't I just show it to you now? Yep. Okay. We are in frame. Here was the only challenge I had putting it together is now I had to thread the table onto the top. So I guess had I known that it was going to be as easy as it was, I could have put it all together and then just pushed it into the ground. But I wasn't sure if I was going to have to hammer the table in or not. There we go. All right. So fully assembled. Now let me back the camera away. I'll put a few items on top as I talk about the specifications for this and that'll demonstrate also how I use it. All right, I've uh, got the table set up. I'm just gonna give you a few specifications for it. So overall weight of this is 14.1 ounces, 400 grams. So it's just under a pound. And uh, yeah, so the top is listed as being aluminum alloy, but I'm gonna be honest, it, to me, it looks like stainless steel. Now I haven't tested it with a magnet to see. And even then, of course, sometimes stainless steel will be non-magnetic depending on the content of other materials in it. So I will confirm this. If it's not aluminum, as the website says, then I'll put that on the screen. If it's not aluminum, it turns out to be stainless steel. I think that's a bit of a miss because it really should be aluminum. There's no reason to be carrying around a great big plate of stainless steel, even with all those cutouts in it. However, the legs are listed as stainless steel. Hopefully they didn't have it just reversed on their website. And if they are stainless steel, I can appreciate that because that means they're, the threading is going to be just that much stronger as well. So as I mentioned, each of the legs is six and a half inches. So you can get a total of 28.3 inches out of that. Now, obviously I don't have it 28.3. I probably have it 18, 20 inches off of the ground right now because the rest of it I pushed down inside. But again, you can use anywhere from one to all four of this, the uh, custom seg the segments to customize the height as you want. Measurements are pretty simple. 
the tabletop is nine inches by nine inches, which is 230 by 230 millimeters. So that's all there is to it. Now, I just want to show you how I used it today. So I just made myself a cup of tea and it's not that I couldn't have done this on the ground. It's just that I found a convenient way of testing it. And you know what? This isn't a bad concept at all. I wasn't sure how much I would like it. Uh, well, a few more comments in a moment. So what I have here is I just have my Trangia alcohol stove, little pots down on top, kettle on top, and a tiny windscreen, which is actually the base for another stove. Now, I could put it that way, but this is the way I had it because the wind's at my back, so I wanted to block it there. And here is my cup of tea, still full of tea actually right now. I don't know how much weight you could put on it, but I would suggest whatever you do want to put on here, you're going to want to balance it so it's not off to one side or the other. I guess you could eat off of this, put your dinner plate on if you wanted to. You could put a gas stove on this. I think you might be able to put a small wood stove on top of this to get it off of the ground. Uh, if I were to do that, I would still probably use my uh, fireproof mat on top of this. Um, yeah, just for an extra layer of safety, of course. Don't think I'd use a big full-size 5-inch Gen 2 stainless steel firebox only because of the weight and because, well, it, it, I don't think it's the right combination. And then you have to consider what are you putting on top of the stove itself. So it's all about weight. It's not about strength in this case. It's all about weight and the balance of it. So I'm going to bring the camera in and I'm just going to give you a few more close-ups of it and then we'll just wrap the video up. Okay, I can only assume that fire maple refers to this as the dandelion buddy just because of the cutouts to give it a flower kind of a motif, if you will. And when I looked at this, I kind of wondered, is there any practical value to those cutouts other than reducing the weight? Does it actually offer you any opportunity to do something with it? So I tried a number of things. I thought maybe one of those holes, the four holes in the four quadrants, would allow me to attach a small gas canister stove through the holes. It would not. So I don't know if that's something you might be able to do, that just lower it down, put the tank underneath and the gas canister stove on top. I've seen that done with other tables. Can't do it with this or through any of the slots either. So about the only thing I found that I could put through each of those slots was a pair of tongs or a mug that had a hooked handle on it, something like that, not a whole lot. So I don't know what else I might use those slots for, but uh, yeah, that's what I'm gonna say about it. And I'm just gonna back the camera away one more time because I wanna show you the post in the ground and pass a comment on that. Now, the first time I started using this and I was a little concerned that a single central post was not gonna give it a whole lot of stability. And I'm not convinced that it will in all conditions. So I think it's something that you do need to be aware of. You know, you have to have it far enough in the ground and that's not always easy around here. Here it happens to be quite deep duff, so it worked out well for me. But you're not always gonna be able to drive it further into the ground. Now, if I could get one segment in or two segments in, then that's still an advantage. It just gets your, your stove and everything or your pot or your dinner plate off of the ground just a little bit. And it's not so tall. And when it's not so tall, then maybe it's not so tippy either. I'm not sure if there would have been an advantage to having a tripod for this just to, you know, move the, uh, the distribute the weight over three legs. Uh, then, of course, you're adding weight and complexity to it, and that's kind of exactly not what this is all about. It's supposed to be a very, very simple thing to use. But the more I've used it, the more I find that as long as I can get it into the ground, it's actually not bad at all. It works pretty good just as it is. All right, those are the things I want to say about it. I have one or two more comments and then we'll wrap this video up. All right, but the only other comment I wanted to make on this because I was just looking to get a little bit more versatility out of it is it would be nice if there was an adapter that I could screw into the mount right on the top. Let's see if I can get the table off to quick show you what I'm talking about here. Right up there on top where the bolt is. And if I could get an adapter that would have a quarter inch 20 thread, then I could put it on top of a tripod, like the camera tripod my camera is sitting on right now. That would just give me a little bit more versatility. Then I wouldn't have to carry, well, the stakes out with me. I could just work with the tabletop itself. Uh, but that's about the only thing. And by the way, if you're aware of an adapter that might fit, it would have to screw around the outside of this. And I'll, I'll see if I can't get the dimensions for it. Uh, and add that into the, the video description. It's not part of the description that's on their website. Overall, it's a 
nice looking little piece of equipment. It's, you know, it's not for everybody. It has its application. Right now where I'm at out here in the woods, it's kind of a nice little feature to have, but there's a bit of weight to it. So that's something you'll have to decide for yourself. Are you willing to carry a little bit of weight to have a table that takes whatever you're doing off of the ground, like eating your meal or making your, making your coffee or whatever? If you are, then it's not bad. The only thing I would like to see is you know, I'm pretty sure that is stainless steel. I'm going to have to confirm that. I think it's backwards, the material or the specifications I have. I'm pretty sure this is stainless steel. If that's the case, fire maple, make it aluminum and then you'll know, lighten the package up. It's almost a pound, right? So if there's a way of lightening this package up, it becomes just a little bit more attractive for people to take hiking. Okay, that's everything I have to say about the Fire Maple Dandy Line Buddy. If you have any comments or questions, put them in the comment section below. If I'll put the specifications and the links to where you can take another look at this in the video description. But until next time, get out and explore and take that path less travel because it will make all the difference. Bye for now.